there. Welcome into the first edition of the SAU Softball Coaches Show for 2016. I'm Daniel Gallegos, joined alongside head softball coach Jason Anderson. And coach, this being the first uh, Coaches Show of the year, obviously the 2016 season is upon us. It's this weekend. Um, a little bit different than years past when opening up the season. Not that there's any less excitement. There's actually more excitement, I think, surrounding this opening weekend because you are hosting an uh, eight-team tournament here at home using two fields. Uh, the construction of the new softball complex has been going on. Looks great up on the hill. Talk a little bit about that, being able to host the tournament and just what it means for the program as a whole. Well, I think just the complex in general is, is a, a huge step for our program. It's, uh, of course, like you said, it's two fields up there on the hill. Going to have coaches' offices, locker room facilities, two new press boxes, public restrooms, um, everything up there, as well as lights on both fields, which is a huge luxury for I mean, some Obviously, main fields don't even have light, so that's a big deal for us, and, and we like. So, like you said before, the excitement is definitely there. Um, the, the complex is going to be one of the top complexes in the region, and, and we obviously, as a softball coach, appreciate everything that, uh, the, from the president to the athletic director and everything's done to make that happen for us and our program. Uh, in regards to the tournament, we're bringing in a great field. Uh, we basically set it up where five conferences are represented. We have two teams coming out of the MIAA, two teams coming out of the Heartland, two teams coming out of the Lone Star Conference, and then ourselves out of the GAC and Delta State representing uh, the Gulf South Conference kind of makes that up, and we're kind of each day a different conference opponent's kind of playing a different conference. So uh, we're bringing in Lincoln University, Southwest Baptist University, uh, like I mentioned, us, Delta State, Cameron University, Texas Women's, uh, Roger State, and Newman University. So we got a good group coming in. Looks like the weather's going to cooperate, which is always a coin flip this time of year, but uh, so far it looks really good and should be a lot of good softball played up on the hill this weekend. Yeah, good chance to get in some in-region games, some good competition. Uh, again, the, the awesome facility that we're going to have, so really looking forward to that. As the season is getting ready to come up, um, obviously, or letting everybody know in case they missed it, your team was picked to finish third in the Great American Conference last year. You, fit, you went into the tournament eighth in the conference, just a little bit over 500 both overall and um, within conference play. But being around you guys, knowing the program and things like that, and just everybody internally, you got to feel that you are at least poised to have a much better year than last year in terms of wins and losses. Absolutely. We uh, have uh, nine seniors and eight juniors on our team right now. We have a very heavy upperclassmen group, and with that comes a lot of experience and a lot of, you know, we do have some adversity where we feel like that we're, we're poised to, to handle it and move on. We're, we're very talented top to bottom. And like you said last year, I mean, we finished 500, I believe, in conference, a couple games over 500 overall. Not the year that we wanted uh, in, in the transition year as far as the coaching change goes, and, and we definitely feel like we are, are, are set up to exceed those very well. As far as the preseason poll goes, they're just that, preseason polls. You know, they can pick you first or they can pick you last. At the end of the day, that's why the games are played. I always tell the girls the game – does not know who's supposed to win, so we get out there and we play them. But uh, we have a great group. Everybody's working hard. They're bought into what what we're trying to accomplish this year and, and what our main goals are as far as you know winning conference and then moving on into an NCAA tournament setting. So um, we are definitely excited, and we feel like uh, we have a group that can really win some games this year. Focusing on the offensive side of, of, of the game, that's been an area that over the last few years – um, and including your pedigree, has been at the forefront, I would say, of the program. Um, some big names coming back, some big hitters in the lineup. Matty Dow, Ash Natwell uh, jumped to the forefront. Uh, you mentioned before Darian Harris has been one that has improved year in and year out. Also, you're getting back a player like Brooke Goad, who has battled herself through some injuries, but right there at the top with all those. And then mixed in with everybody else, your lineup, top to bottom, one through nine, I think you feel uh, can compete with anybody. Take us through some of the, not necessarily the holes, that you had to fill, but some of the ones that will replace players that we got used to the past few years? Well, like you said, we have, uh, with Maddie and Ashton returning, uh, and Darian, they were uh, kind of in the middle of our lineup last year and had really good years. Uh, we also return, uh, who got some significant time last year, in Liz Hudgens, who's a starting center fielder, does a great job, finds ways to get on base, and came up with some big hits for us last year. Um, also, Summer Eric, kind of part-time player last year. We had some 
some issues, some academic things with her that we were working out, started off the year with us and then had to kind of, was, was kind of on the shelf for a little bit, then was able to come back at the end of the year after we figured everything out. But she's been here all fall, of course, and, and getting back into it knows that, that she's going to bring. And then, of course, Taylor Gwynn is another girl who has received a lot of at-bats and a lot of time here in the last few years, and she's another one that's just a very, very tough out. As far as new, new faces, you kind of see we do have a returner in Chelsea Jordan who will see a substantial time at third base, and we expect her to do a very good job. Uh, uh, Tyler Casada is a catcher for us. She, uh, her and Cheyenne Nichols were transfers from Northwestern Oklahoma State, so they had to sit due to conference regulations. But they were here last year but could not play, so they're back uh, and ready to go. And then, of course, um, we just we have a lot of other players. I mean, we feel like our depth is there. If one of them aren't getting it done that day, then we're going to be able to provide some different options or, or some, especially some pinch hit at bats or some different looks. And, and like you said before, we feel like that we're going to be able to manufacture some runs. Uh, we should have a lot of power top to bottom, and, and, and we should score runs. And, and that's all you can ask is hopefully you can score your pitchers some runs and then they can keep in the game. Yeah, those pitchers you're talking about, it's going to be kind of a new look pitching staff. A lot of new faces. Some of them were, were here last year but are now getting their chance uh, to be eligible to play and pitch for you in the circle. But some of the returners, Chancey Williams, Miranda Cuff, got a lot of innings for you last year. Um, they're back. What do you expect out of them? We bring both of them back. And uh, I think one of the problems with last year's team is, as we talk about, if you talk about how we can get better, uh, was is that we, we feel like we hit the ball pretty well. We just we didn't get it done in the circle. We didn't we weren't able to get anybody out. And the problem with that is is not uh, is because I think all of our pitchers were very similar. So um, when we were able to change it up in the gruesome four game schedule a weekend that you play in the GAC, uh, we were kind of bringing in similar pitchers. So I was trying to give them a different look, but from a from a standpoint of you know where they're pitching and location wise, it was pretty much the same look. So uh, we feel like that they are going to help us tremendously uh, as well because we're going to be able to provide some different pitchers. Uh, of course, we have Kimmy Beasley, left-handed pitcher, uh, Division One pitcher out of the University of Arkansas that came in. Uh, Kaylee Garner as well uh, came in at Texas State. Uh, Peyton Jenkins is doing a great job for us. She kind of battled a little injury, but she's back from it and throwing now, and, and she's, she really worked hard to get back. Those are some girls that had some Division One experience, and then we've got a couple freshman left-handed pitchers too. So we've developed a really good staff to where not only we're going to be able to mix it up a little bit, but at least we can hopefully give you a different look. We've got some girls that are very, very good pitchers at the top of our rotation and some others that will need to provide key innings for us when we do need to go to the bullpen and, and figure out how we can get some of these teams out. We appreciate it very much for your time. Again, that's head softball coach Jason Anderson. He and his Lady Mill Riders kick off the 2016 season at home this weekend for a big eight-team tournament at the uh, new softball complex. Beautiful complex, two fields. Like you mentioned, press box, concession stand, public restrooms for everybody. So uh, be able to, and hopefully some really good weather it's looking like to be able to come out for early February. Can't ask for much more. Be sure to check MealRiderAthletics.com for all your pre- and post-game coverage this weekend and for the remainder of the season. Coach, appreciate it. Best of luck. Thank you.